Victoria, Queen and Empress, ruled the country from 1837 to 1901. Oscar Wilde, a unique artist, elegant and refined in both his life and works, had to deal with the hypocrisy and narrow-mindedness of the Victorian frame of mind. Let's briefly see what happened and why. This is to briefly present Oscar Wilde and the role he played in unveiling the flaws of the Victorian frame of mind. But first of all, what do we mean by Victorian compromise? This is George William Joyce, the Bayswater Omnibus. The picture sums up many traits of Victorian respectability and wealth. Reliable public transport, smartly dressed ladies and gentlemen, shopping for fashionable goods. Notice the advertisements above the windows. The term Victorian has acquired a negative meaning in our time. It suggests an idea of prudery, extreme propriety, often hypocritical, in behaviour or speech, and especially in sexual matters. Though there is some truth in this, there is much more than this to the Victorian period. In fact, there was much more reaction to the above-mentioned tendency, and it should also be noted that many of its less pleasant aspects were inherited from the previous age and did not disappear on Victoria's death. The utilitarian philosophers, especially Jeremy Bentham, claimed that everything had to be judged according to standards of utility and how much it promoted the material happiness of the greatest number of people. However, this led to unrestrained competition and exploitation of human and natural resources. The Victorian establishment refused to admit the existence of a materialistic philosophy of life, trying to cover the unpleasant aspects of progress under a veil of respectability and facile optimism. This was the so-called Victorian Compromise, and some of the most terrible consequences are clearly shown in the painting by Luke Fields, applicants for admission to a casual ward. The reaction to industrialism and liberalism was strong even among the liberals themselves. The best minds of the age feared that Britain was becoming what Conservative Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli aptly defined as the two nations, a society made up of only two classes, the rich and the poor. Such different thinkers as Thomas Carlyle, the philosopher and economist John Stuart Mill, and the art critic and writer John Ruskin were all concerned by the damage industrialization had brought to men and the environment. The miserable condition of the British working class contributed much to the revolutionary theories of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, who both lived in Britain and together wrote the Communist Manifesto in 1848. Though communism never really flourished in Britain, Marxism had some influence on the British socialists of the latter part of Victoria's reign. More directly inspired by Marxist philosophy was the Fabian Society, founded in 1884 by Sidney and Beatrice Webb. The Fabian Society took its name from Quintus Fabius Maximus, the Roman general nicknamed Cunctator, that is one who delays things. Because of his delaying war tactics, likewise, the Fabians believed in gradual reforms rather than violent revolution. Oscar Wilde was born in Dublin and was educated at Trinity College and Magdalen College in Oxford. At Oxford, he was highly influenced by John Ruskin, one of his lecturers, and attracted to the aesthetic movement. As leader of the aesthetic movement, he was invited to the United States in 1881 to give a series of lectures. In 1881, he married Constance Lloyd, with whom he had two children. His first literary success was the novel The Picture of Dorian Gray. He followed this with four plays, Lady Windermere's Fan, A Woman of No Importance, An Ideal Husband, and the most famous of all, The Importance of Being Earnest. In 1895, he was sent to reading prison for two years because of his homosexual relationship with Lord Alfred Douglas. De Profundis was written during his time in prison and The Ballad of Reading Jail after he was released. After leaving prison, he went to France, 
a physically and spiritually broken man, where he died alone in a small hotel in Paris in 1900. The famous preface is considered the manifesto of the English aesthetic movement. Read it carefully and find out which parts clearly convey the writer's idea on the role of art and the artist. The only excuse for making a useless thing is that one admires it intensely. All art is quite useless. The preface offers one of Wilde's most famous aphorisms, but it also sets the tone for the book and lets the reader know that The Picture of Dorian Gray will be a book of expansive ideas and wonderful language. Obviously, such a clever, free and outstanding personality could not accept the hypocrisy of the Victorian mentality and pay the price for his intellectual integrity. Find out what he still has to say to us Enjoy his famous and only novel, his short stories, watch his plays, and read The Ballad of Reading Jail. His use of language is witty and ironic. His characters are unforgettable and his appeal is unique.